The Worlds of Wonders Team Go Rocket Takeover event is officially starting around the world in Pokemon Go. And today I want to get you guys all ready for this event, everything you need to know about it, and some tips and tricks. As always, let's get into it. So this event is going to be March 27th, 10 a.m. to March 31st at 8 p.m. You'll see the bonuses of increased Team Rockets at Pokestops and in Balloons. Specifically in Balloons, I believe they're coming every three hours. So it's going to be 3, 6, 9, 12 a.m. and p.m. Also, you'll be able to use a regular Charge Champ or an Elite Charge Champ on any Shadow Pokemon that knows the Legacy Move Frustration to remove that move. Once you've removed Frustration from a Shadow Pokemon, you can use it with this regular move pool forever, pretty much allowing you to actually use Shadows. Giovanni's also going to return during this event with Shadow Groudon. Yes, if you battle Giovanni using a Black Rocket Raider, we'll talk about how to get one of those in this video, you can go ahead and defeat him, and then you will get an encounter with Shadow Groudon. We'll also see exclusive Pokestop showcases during the event based on different themed Pokemon. Now, as far as sponsor event, we're going to see Murkrow, Sableye, Purloin, Scraggy, Inkay, and rare spawns for Zara, Vullaby, and Dino. We'll also see 12 kilometer eggs hatching Larvitar, Sandile, Ponyard, Vullaby, Dino, Pancham, Salandit, and Varum. Yes, Sandile is going to be the new shiny during this event. As far as raids go, we're only going to have Shadow Raids. In the one-star Shadow Raids, we'll see Shadow Drowsy, Poliwag, Barboche, and Fungus. Three-star Shadow Raids will be Hitmontop, Wobbuffet, and Sneasel. And five-star Shadow Raids, specifically only on March 30th and March 31st. The weekend is going to be Shadow Mewtwo. Yes, returning to Shadow Raids. And of course, you can get the shiny Shadow Mewtwo. Definitely do not miss that Shadow Raid weekend. But remember, Shadow Raids can only be done with in-person passes. No remote raid passes. We'll also see exclusive new shadows during the event appearing from Team Go Rocket Grunts, including Shadow Pidgey, Shadow Darumaka, Shadow Gothita, and Shadow Solosis, along with a bunch of other new shadows staying or returning. I'll link below a resource if you want to know which ones are staying and which ones are returning. The leader Pokemon will have changed as well during this event, with Arlo now having Shadow Cacne, which of course can be Shiny Shadow Cacne. Sierra will have Shadow Trapinch, which of course can be Shiny Shadow Trapinch. Cliff can have Shadow Machop, which of course can be Shiny Shadow Machop, and then any Giovanni you battle will have Shadow Groudon, but no, this cannot be a shiny Shadow Groudon, only the regular version of Groudon. But we also have some exclusive research going down during the event. Starting with the field research task, we'll see the task defeat a Team Go Rocket Grunt for a Mysterious Component, defeat two Team of Rocket Grunts for a Sableye or an Inkay encounter, defeat three Grunts for a Volibye or a Dino encounter, defeat a Team Go Rocket Leader for a Ponyard or a Volibye encounter, and purify three Shadow Pokemon for a Fast TM or a Charge TM. Also, we'll of course have the season-long special research story to get the Black Rocket Radar. This will be given to you and then you'll have unlimited time to complete it. But on screen is going to be all the tasks. Of course, on page four, getting you that Black Rocket Radar, which is what you need to battle Giovanni and get an encounter with the Shadow Groudon. Remember, if you don't want a Shadow Groudon and you want to stack this, the key is to not go past page one of this research. I have a full video up here breaking down how to stack radars and that's pretty much the strategy. Check it out, but probably you would want to be getting this radar because you definitely do want to get Shadow Groudon. There'll also be an exclusive timed research during this event. This you're going to have to complete during the event, but the tasks are on screen does get you the Volibi and the Ponyer Encounter and some other items, which can be kind of nice. And finally, the $2 timed research story you can go ahead and buy for $2 USD. Gets you a bunch of mysterious components, a incubator, a radar, and a Ponyer Encounter. Is it worth $2? Probably not. I don't really know if this one's that worth it, but it is an option for you. Now with the event details, away, let's get right into the tips, starting with, as always, what are the best spawns during this event? First of all, we're going to see Murkrow, which evolves into Honchkrow, which is a decent budget flying and dark type rate attacking Pokemon. You can go ahead and have on your team. Also see Sableye in there, which does get you 750 Stardust per catch. So mainly cast those Sableyes for the extra Stardust. Sableye, however, also does have a Mega Form in the game if you want a good IV for that. And also a Purified form of a Shadow Sableye is going to be very good with its exclusive Purified move return. So you can get some candies for that through these wild Sableyes. Scraggy's also in there, which evolves into Scrafty, a good Great League and Ultra League Pokemon. Inkay is in there, which evolves into Malamar, good in some limited cups like the Psychic Cup. Vullaby is in there, which I believe is like one of the first times we've seen Vullaby in the wild which evolves into Mandibuzz. Mandibuzz is good in the Great League and the Ultra League, and you can get a good PDPIV because it's spawning in the wild. Finally, Dino in there, which evolves into High Dragon, which is going to be a good dark type raid attacking Pokemon, actually one of the best in the game with his legacy move, Brutal Swing. And also the middle stage of Dino, Zwilus is actually decent in the Great League, and Dino itself is good in the Little Cup. We also have exclusive 12 kilometer eggs during events, so let's quickly talk about those, and are they actually going to be worth going after? Now, if you don't know, to get 12 kilometer eggs, you have to defeat a Team Go Rocket leader with an egg slot open, and these do end up filling up those extra three slots you do have. As far as the meta relevant Pokemon in the 12 case, we have Larvitar, which evolves into Tyranitar, which does have a mega form in the game right now and in itself is a good rock and dark type raid attacker. Ponyard is in there, which Ponyard in itself is actually pretty good for some limited great league metas, like I believe like the Willpower Cup it was decent in. Volibi is in there, which we already talked about, as well as Dino we talked about, and that's about it. Really, the 12 column regs, in my opinion, are good for getting Pokemon that you might not have for your Pokedex. That includes things like Sandile, Pancham, Salandit, Varum, all kind of hard Pokemon to get, only available 
level through 12 gaze. Or if you wanna go after that new shiny Sandal, you can go after it, but if not, I would just wait. Sandal will probably get released in the wild at some sort of go fest in the future. So it's really not the most worth to really grind these eggs out. Now, the main section of this video is going to be about the shadow Pokemon because Team Rocket events are all about the shadow Pokemon. Now shadow Pokemon do 20% more damage, but also take 20% more damage. So as far as ray attackers, they're always gonna be better, but in PVP, sometimes they'll be better, sometimes they won't. Let's talk about what are the best shadows to go after during this event, starting with the new shadow Pokemon we're getting. First of all, Shadow Pidgey evolving into Shadow Pidgeot. Pidgeot has seen play in some limited Great League Cups as well as in the Ultra League and in the Shadow form. It'll probably be pretty good as well. So definitely worth grabbing that one. Darumaka is in there, which evolves into Darmanitan. Shadow Darmanitan is going to be a top fire type ray attacker in the game. That Shadow Boost really going to help it out. So this is definitely a Pokemon you're going to want to go after in the Grunts. Other than that though, the Gothita and Shadow Solosis are nothing really to write home about and you can skip those ones. There'll also be a whole bunch of other Shadows just staying in Grunts or returning that we haven't seen in a while. Check out my video up here if you want to know what the best Pokemon to power up in Pokemon Go are and, you know, by nature, the best Shadow Pokemon if you want to learn about those ones. Now let's talk about the leader Pokemon and which ones are going to be the best to go after. First of all, the Shadow Cacne, unfortunately not going to be very good. Arlo is a very skippable leader this time around, unless you want that shiny Shadow. For Shadow Tropinch, you can go ahead and evolve that into Shadow Flygon, which does see some play in some limited Great League metas. Not a bad Pokemon to grab, but again, not the best. The best one will probably be Cliff, getting you the Shadow Machop, which of course, Shadow Machamp is one of the best fighting type ray attackers in the game right now, and also not a bad Pokemon for the Great League, and you can even run it in the Ultra League and the Master League. Overall, if you're looking for meta relevance, Cliff is the way to go, but there are some cool new shiny shadows you can go after, but this is probably one of the weaker rotations we've seen. Now, we also have Shadow Groudon making its debut in Giovanni. Obviously, we just had Shadow Kyogre, but Shadow Groudon is going to be a great Pokemon because it is going to be the best ground type ray attacker in the game with its legacy move, Precipice Blades. Definitely grab yourself one. Grab yourself more than one if you've been saving up radars. If you want to know how to save radars, check out my video up here. But yeah, definitely grab them. I'm probably going to grab myself two of these Shadow Groudons. Hopefully, I get a good IV, but definitely a Pokemon worth grabbing on your team. Also, Shadow Groudon will be good in the Master League, as is regular Groudon. Those Precipice Blades are going to be hitting so hard with the Shadow form. So if you get a good IV one, I would consider powering up all the way. Also, the thing that makes me most excited about Shadow Groudon is that Kyogre Groudon Rayquaza is probably going to be our next Shadow during our next event, probably in like three months. If you do end up grabbing more than one Groudon, make sure you save maybe like an extra radar for Shadow Rayquaza, because Shadow Rayquaza is just going to be so, so good, especially with Dragon Ascent. It's going to be a Pokemon you're going to want. Next up, let's talk about the raids, best Shadow raids. In the one star raids, we have Shadow Drowsy evolving into Shadow Hypno, a decent Pokemon for some limited Great League Cups. Shadow Poliwag, which evolves into Shadow Poliwrath, a Pokemon good for the Great League and the Ultra. League. And you can also evolve that into Shadow Poly Toad, which does see some play in the Great League sometimes. Shadow Barboach is in there, which evolves into Shadow Wish Cash, a staple Great League Pokemon you definitely need on your team. Shadow Fungus is in there, which does get you 500 Stardust per catch. So if you do end up raiding those, you can get a little bit of extra Stardust. And the three star Shadow Raids, the ones to go after are going to be Shadow Wobbuffet. If you actually purify a Wobbuffet and max it out to level 50, it will be a very good Great League Pokemon. But you need, again, like Sableye, the Legacy Move Return on this one. So that's why you want to catch the Shadow and then purify it into a Hundo level 50. Shadow Sneasel is also in there, which evolves into Shadow Weavile, which is going to be a good ice and dark type raid attacking Pokemon. Finally, of course, Shadow Mewtwo is returning in the five star Shadow Raids. Shadow Mewtwo is the highest damage per second Pokemon in the game. I believe it is the number one psychic type raid attacker and also does see play as ghost type raid attackers with Shadow Ball. It can be an electric type raid attacker with Thunderbolt. It is pretty much one of the best Pokemon to get. Remember, Shadow Raids need to be done in person. So message your group right now, message your local players and get organized to do these Shadow Raids, as many Shadow Mewtwo Raids as you can, because this is a Shadow Pokemon you 100% need. I'm going to have a counter guide on how to take down Shadow Mewtwo coming out closer to this weekend, because again, remember, it's only on the weekend. But yeah, do your Shadow Mewtwo Raids. Now that you know what Shadows are good, there's one thing that kind of preventing you from using them, and that's going to be the Legacy Move Frustration. But luckily, if you catch these Shadows before the end of the event, you can actually use a regular Charge Sham to remove Frustration from these Pokemon. So let me show you guys the best way to do this. Now you're going to come to your search bar, and you're going to search at Frustration, and this will show you all the Shadow Pokemon you have that know the Legacy Move Frustration. Now, when the event starts, I want you guys to come in here and you just want to go through all your shadow Pokemon that have good IVs, like for example, this pincer that I want to remove frustration from. You can then click here, click items, and just quickly remove frustration. Now, I can't do it right now because the event hasn't started, but do that in that way. Then set a reminder near the end of the event, before the end of the event, to go back through with all the new shadows you caught during the event and do this. If you want to know how to get a lot of charge shams, I will link below a video because you're going to need charge shams to remove frustration from these Pokemon. But again, once you've removed it, it's going to be gone forever. But yeah, use this search method is definitely the best way to quickly remove frustration from your
from your shadow Pokemon. And don't forget to do it before the event ends. Now, obviously we have some special spawns during events, so I do quickly want to run through some candy tips and how to grind a lot of candy for some of the wild spawns. And honestly, even some of the shadows you're going to be catching. Obviously using pineapple berries, regular pineapple berries, multiply and catch candy by two and silvers by 2.34. Also, when you do catch your shadow Groudon, make sure you do use a pineapple berry because I do believe it is a guaranteed catch on shadow legendary Pokemon from Giovanni. You can also use spatial rend. Spatial rend is an ability that Palkia can use for Stardust and Palkia candies that will increase your spawn distance. If you're going to be grinding some spawns during this event to get more candies for things like Sableye, Inkay, Dino, you're going to want to see more of these spawns. So use spatial rend. You'll see more spawns. You'll catch more Pokemon. You'll get more candy. You can also go ahead and mega evolve a Pokemon. If you don't know when you mega evolve a Pokemon, any Pokemon you catch that shares a type with the mega, you get more candy, XL candy, and XP. What mega should we mega evolve during this event? Well, it's going to be very easy. A dark type mega. During these dark type focus events, I always recommend mega evolving a mega Sableye because mega Sableye is a ghost and dark type Pokemon. So it will get you more candies for pretty much all of the dark themed Pokemon, I like to say. But any other dark type mega will work. Things like mega Houndoom, mega Absol, all that stuff. Just definitely have a dark type mega mega evolve because I think every single spawn is a dark type. You can also go ahead and trade away Pokemon if you don't know when you trade away Pokemon. If the distance between the two Pokemon where they were caught is over 100 kilometers, you're guaranteed an XL candy and as well as more regular candies. So go ahead and trade any of the extra Pokemon you have with a friend that might have some distance Pokemon caught in another country or something. Even if you don't have a friend with distance Pokemon, still trading is just a great thing to do because you will still just get regular candy, like one regular candy, but you will get good IV potentials because Pokemon can go lucky and have IV floors of 12, 12, 12, and you never know, you end up getting hundo luckies all the time. Trading is, is underrated. Finally, go ahead and transfer Pokemon. No two times transfer candy event as I know right now. Maybe just hold on to some of the rare spawns like, I don't know, Volibis and Sableyes that you want more candies for until April and then wait for the two times transfer candy spotlight hour. Finally, brings us to our platinum metal tips. You need 35 platinum metals to go from level 48 to 49 in Pokemon Go. Which ones should we be working on during this event? As always, the type metals here at the bottom, specifically the delinquent metal, catch 2,500 dark types. You know, they're gonna be everywhere during this event. We also have the exclusive raids. Do the shadow raids of any of the shadow Pokemon you've never raided before, or actually just that Pokemon you've never raided before. And you'll get a point towards the rising star medal. For example, I've probably never done a Hitmon top raid. So I'm gonna do one of those to get a point towards this medal. You only need 150 to complete it, but sometimes it can be fun to see how high you can get this medal. Now, obviously this is a Team Go Rocket event. So the hero medal defeat 2000 Team Go Rocket members. They're gonna be everywhere in balloons, at rockets, all that stuff. Do as many Team Go Rockets, take as many shadow Pokemon as you can. That in turn will also work on your purifier medal, purify a thousand shadow Pokemon. Any of the shadow Pokemon you catch that don't have good IVs, instead of transferring them, you might as well purify them. Now, granted, I only really ever purify the Pokemon that costs a thousand or three thousand stars to purify. The five thousand ones are a little bit expensive. But again, if you're going to transfer a shadow Pokemon, you might as well purify it before you actually transfer it. Also, if you end up battling Giovanni, you'll be working on your Ultra Hero Medal. Defeat the Team Go Rocket boss 50 times. This medal is actually impossible to complete right now. I believe we've only had like 22 Giovanni encounters so far, but still you'll be working on this and you can work on getting um, this exclusive Giovanni shirt which is kind of gangster. Oh, I can't really see it. Finally, as for every single event, showcases will be a thing. So the showcase star medal win 100 Pokestop showcases you can work on. I'm realizing I, I literally never win showcases. I'm still at eight. But again, drop into your rural showcases if you can. If you can take a drive out of the city, it's going to be easier to win higher odds. Um, you know, the less competition, the better, right? So do that if you can. That is it, guys. If you guys want to watch me play this event, check out the stream below. I will be doing a bunch of shiny shadow hunting. You do not want to miss that. Click on that below. But I wish you guys luck during this Team Go Rocket Takeover event. Good luck catching Shadow Ground and all and follow for tips. Peace.